the sun keeps coming in and out and so now I appear very bright on this screen hello everybody June here I'm going to tell you this has been the most difficult video to film in recent memory this is the March 2019 sewing and one knitting project but let me tell you this is the third time that I have to film this video the first time I'm trying to remember what happened. I can't even remember anymore. Uh, the first, oh, I remember, duh. The first time I started recording, I talked into the camera for about 40 minutes and then I stopped the recording, but that's when it actually started recording. So that entire time, I had not been speaking into a recording camera. So I got none of that footage. And it took so much to get me motivated again to film a second time, but I managed to pull myself together, filmed it a second time, and then I realized that something had gone wrong with the microphone connection to the camera and the audio was unusable. So that was twice in one day, back-to-back -back filmings, and I, I just could not muster the enthusiasm to film it again. So here I am, one week later, trying it for the third time. So, now that I've actually made sure that this is recording, and I have one microphone on the camera and one microphone on me, let's get started with this March 2019 Sewing and Dating Projects video. So I'm going to go for once in the order in which I actually made these things. The first thing I'm gonna share with you is the York Pinafore by Helen's Closet. And if you remember in, I think it was my last video, I actually made this in a size medium because I went by the finished size of the waist thinking, okay, my waist is that size, the bust is open because you know it's, there's no sides to that pinafore, it'll be fine in a size medium. But of course, then when I tried it on, when I finished, I realized that yeah, sure, it would fit size wise on the waist and there were no sides to construct the bust but I actually had to be able to get this pinafore over my bust while putting it on oh and it is a struggle with that one so because this was in my make nine and I really like the style I decided that I was going to make it in a size large and so for this one I got a lighter color denim and I made it in size large without any other adjustments or anything and that's the one that you've seen here on the video. Now, I see these pinafores on other people and they look so chic, they look so great and then I put it on and to me, on me, it just looks so homely, to put it nicely. Not at all what it looks like on other people and it may be my choice of fabric, it may be that well, I was gonna say it may be that I'm um, I'm a little heavier than a lot of uh, sewers on Instagram or sewists on Instagram, but that's, that doesn't really matter because I've seen a lot of plus size girls with their pinafores on and look great. So it is a problem. Maybe it's in my head. Like I said, maybe it's a choice of fabric. I don't know what it is, but it's really. Um, not it, it doesn't look as good as as it did in my head so yeah I, I I still like it I will wear it but I think it looks pretty homely on me the next thing I want to share with you is this blouse I'm wearing it is number 118 from Berta style April so the 2019 um, fourth month <laughs> issue the current issue it is a pretty boxy top as you can see and I'm looking at my screen so sorry if you um, if I'm not looking through the lens I'm looking at the screen to see what it is that I'm doing so it is pretty boxy and it was so quick to sew I um, got the issue in the mail uh, on on a Friday afternoon was it Friday afternoon sometime in an afternoon and then that same night I traced the pattern and then by the next day it was finished. It is super easy. It is pretty boxy and pretty big. And the minute that I saw it, I knew what fabric I wanted for it. I knew that I wanted this fabric. This is, as I'm sure you can tell, um, because everyone and their mother has sewn with this, 
it is the um, Rayon Chalet uh, from a Rifle Paper Company and Cotton and Steel. Uh, it, it's, it's just all over Instagram. So like, I'm sure people who see this on the street, they're like, I know you made that. Uh, people who sew. And yes, I did. And I made some adjustments. The most important one uh, was in the sizing. Normally for Berta, I am about a size 44, 46, depending on the style. And that is going by my full bust. Well, that's not true. I guess that's going by my high bust and then I have to do a full bust adjustment. But for this one, I made a 42 and it is still pretty big. Um, and, I mean, it's supposed to be loose, but it's pretty baggy. So if I had made a 46, I probably would be swimming in fabric, which is just not a good look when you are already slightly stodgy and busty. I also shortened the sleeves two inches just so that I could save some fabric. And even, even though I shortened them, they are still pretty long. They are just below my elbow which is I think about j just as long as I would want them to be in a style like this. However, it does run short. Uh, if you uh, can see on the video here, I say this every time, but I'm five one and a half, and this is like just about on the level of acceptable for me. Anything shorter, I would absolutely have to wear with a cami underneath because when I lift my arms, you can just about see where uh, the waistband, the top of the waistband of my jeans is. And, and to me, that's, that's just how much flesh I want to show. Like, I don't want to show any more than that. So if you are taller than me, you definitely will want to lengthen the body. I keep trying to adjust the exposure so that I'm not so blown out because I can see I'm, um, it's pretty bright, but it's kind of hard because the sun keeps coming in and out. Anyhow, the next thing that I made was the Kylie shirt dress by Classic Case Patterns. See? Right again. I had made a version of this. I made the dress version back in June and this time I decided to make uh, view B which is a tunic and the last time I did a full button placket this time I did the pop over placket which was so intimidating. I had made one of these before. I made a pop over placket in a class but it was supervised and I was actually pretty terrified to try it on my own. Now to me this is just fabric right but it, there's just something about trying a skill like that where you actually have to cut into your full garment piece uh, in order to make it work that is just it's just scary uh, however it turned out just fine I think this placket is definitely a lot prettier than the previous placket that I made uh, the previous popover placket so I'm good with that now I made a size 10 because I got a little bit overzealous with the sizing Last time I had made a size 12 and I thought, oh, I, I have plenty of room here. Um, and of course you do around the bust, but then, you know, because the, the sleeves are cut onto the, not cut, but um, sort of like grown on sleeves and even though you have sleeve bands, you still have to be able to get your arms in there and move around. And for me with a size 10, that just wasn't possible. So even though I had room in the bust, I had to go in and fix the seam. So instead of having five eighths of an inch, I undid the side seam and I ended up doing something like a quarter of an inch, um, inch, inch, quarter of an inch seam and that seemed fine. One other thing that bugs me about, well, not one other thing, but one thing that bugs me about this is because the fabric that I used is not flowy, it's a shirting fabric, and I'll get to the fabric in a minute, but it's not, like, it's, it's pretty crisp. The um, box pleat in the back, it just, it just bulges out around the waist, and it's just not that attractive. And I remember thinking about this when I made the, the dress version back in June of last year, I made it in linen, which is a lot drapier, but I still remember thinking, oh, if I ever made this again, instead of doing a box pleat, I would just gather the back piece onto the yoke. That way the fullness is spread out and you avoid that weird bulging um, on, on the back, which you can probably see in the video that I've posted here. Uh, so that, that's the only thing. Now the fabric, talk about 
stash uh, fabric use. Um, this fabric is a uh, Lisette fabric from the year, take a breath, 2010. This fabric has been in my stash for nine years. Nine years. <laughs> I don't, I think I got it at Joanne's that much I know, but I don't know why I got it. I don't know why I hadn't used it, but I just hadn't. If you've ever seen, like I know it's been in my stash for that long because the selvage has a date. Lucette fabric usually has uh, the season or at least the date, uh, the year in which the fabric was produced. Um, and that was in 2019. And it is such a cute fabric. It's really hard to, to get the colors um, like faithfully reproduced in video and in pictures, but the background is like a minty green color and it's really cute. Now, I love this tunic, um, even with the slightly bulging back, that's fine, I'll wear it. And the collar was something else that um, I'm very proud of. I did not use the instructions that Classic Case gives for the collar because like most collar instructions, it has you um, construct the collar, like everything, and then the last thing, not everything, it's complicated, but the last thing that you normally do in instructions provided with patterns is um, sew the, the inside of the stand collar, not the stand collar, the inside of the collar stand to, um, to the, the, the next seam, I guess, so on the inside, which means that you have to fold it in and either do it by hand or um, figure out some way to secure it in place while either laying flat or folded in the wrong direction and then do it by machine. So it's just, it's just complicated. And if you've ever done a collar with a stand, then you know what I'm talking about. So I thought, okay, I'm going to look through my books and th there's got to be an easier way to do this because I do not like hand stitching unless I have to. And that method, because you have to essentially say a prayer when you're attaching that that, that inside bit of the collar, um, it doesn't really look all that great. Um, and so I found this other method on a singer book that I have. And in that method, the stands are the first thing that you sew by sandwiching the body of the shirt between the two pieces of the, uh, of the collar stand, the inner collar stand and the outer collar stand. And then you bring that out and then you sew the other parts. And then the last thing that you do is sew the top of the inside collar stand to the top of the collar. And that one, uh, it is actually a much flatter seam, first of all, so it's not that difficult to get things to align. And then because you're top stitching anyway, uh, it's so much easier to get it to look right. Uh, so it's just a combination of just an easier method and it looks better and it requires zero hand stitching. So I love it. Uh, unfortunately, this is really difficult to explain without visuals, but if you have a chance to look at that, um, collar construction. Hey, the book I think is called Singer, uh, The Singer Complete Guide to Sewing. Uh, it is not a vintage one. It is still in print. Uh, so I guess it's, it's just an overall great uh, reference. So I highly recommend it. And I find myself saying uh, 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 a lot in this video. Sorry for that. The next thing that I made was the Rigel Bomber Jacket by Paper Cut Patterns. And I made this already a year and a half ago, I think, in a scuba fabric, and that just didn't turn out right. But I knew that I wanted to give it another shot, so I bought uh, this gorgeous quilted, double-sided fa uh, knit fabric from Emma Wansock some time ago. And then I went on the hunt in the Garmin District here for uh, the color um, ribbing and ribbing for the uh, the sleeve bands and handband. So I find I found them all to match the same color as a fabric, which was great. Now, I have made several paper cut patterns, and by and large, I like them. I have no troubles with them, but I have issues with this particular one, 
and it has nothing to do with the look. The look is fine. It has everything to do with the insides of this jacket. If you notice on mine, there are no pockets. Uh, it is supposed to have wool pockets, but I have no pockets. The reason for this is that this is an unlined jacket and the pattern just gives like virtually no um, consideration to what the inside of this online jacket looks like and it's a mess if you follow the directions and do everything as per the pattern the insides of this thing are just ugly and very amateurish um, just not a good look so I, I did actually want the pockets so I tried to do one and I I could see the seams that were uneven, well uh, seams are not always even. I could see the interfacing, I could see raw edges. It was it was just awful. It was just awful. And then think about those pockets just flopping in there because they're not attached to any other seam. They're not covered by a lining, they're just free floating inside an online jacket. So I try with the pockets, I put one in and I hated it. And then I tried to need, need the, the seams. So I went to search them. And of course I accidentally cut into the jacket while searching these raw edges. So that was my cue to completely forgo the pockets. So I recut that side. Um, it was one of the, the front, uh, uh, one of the front pieces and then went ahead without pockets so that is my biggest complaint with this pattern is the fact that there is no lining and yes I know that I can draft the lining but that is not the point if you're going to design a jacket that has no lining you absolutely 100% need to give a lot of consideration about what the inside of this thing is going to look like because this is not attractive and quite frankly I am very put off uh, from making another version just for that. That's unfortunate because I do like how it looks on the outside. And I mean, there's other things in there that I'm not crazy about construction wise, but I will leave that for a blog post. If I can get my blog back, I've been having blog issues. I've talked about this on Instagram. Um, but yeah, so that is the Rigel Bomber Jacket by Paper Cut Patterns. And the last thing that I made is the Ginger Jeans by Classic Case Patterns, finally. So um, before I go into the actual jeans, let me give you a backstory as to why I decided that I needed to make these jeans. And yes, because of course I like a challenge, I don't. But because I am short and jeans like I always have to get them taken up but more importantly I am very apple shaped and because I'm very apple shaped mid-rise and um, high-waisted jeans just don't work on me I prefer them low-rise not not like early 2000s low-rise but you know low-rise and I have found it impossible to find low-rise jeans in stores these days Everything you can find is mid-rise at the lowest and then high-waisted. And I've tried looking online. I tried in the US. I tried in the UK. I even tried in Spain and nothing. If you do not like high-waisted jeans or mid-rise jeans, you're kind of out of luck in the current market. So because jeans do wear out, I needed to make one pair if I wanted to have low rise jeans. So that's where the ginger jeans come in. And so I made view A, which is the low rise version with the stovepipe legs. I love these things so much. I made a size eight. Uh, I shortened the legs two inches above the knee and then one inch below the knee to cut the fabric and then when I was hemming them I cut off another inch. One other adjustment that I made was that I took in the, well I didn't take it in but the waistband I slashed it uh, but not all the way. I left a little hinge at the part that joins the, the yoke and I overlapped it 
to take off some of the uh, of the excess on the top so it also made it slightly more curved and I think I ended up taking about I want to say half inch off of the waistband total and that made them stay on perfectly these are so great they settle just where I like my jeans to settle um, they are not like they don't give me a muffin top I could actually take in the waist a little bit more maybe for the next pair but they are so flattering I did raise the pockets one whole inch because they were very low for me it's even on a size 8 they were very very low but all in all these are so great uh, and I have said before that I am very much a quick projects kind of person because I like like I like having a finished product but because the finished product of these jeans is so great and I'm so happy with them I really honestly thoroughly enjoyed the process it was it took me like three days to make these um, with you know breaks in between but I really really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to do it again and make a different pair I I have so many plans but of course you know this is spring now so I have to get going because who wants to wear denim in the summer in New York City not me and the last thing that I made was a pair of knitted socks to which everything sticks these um, the pattern is called vanilla and I can't remember the designer but you can find it on on Ravelry it's just a very basic pair of socks and I used the the uh, yarn that I dip dyed myself using Wilton um, teal food coloring and I think I put that in a previous video but I didn't actually intend for this to look this way but it looks slightly uh, self-striping and they actually looks a lot brighter on on the video than they are in real life um, but yeah so just a pair of comfy socks in yarn that I dyed myself uh, I feel like it's a pretty good accomplishment I don't often knit socks um, just because like I have second sock syndrome you make one sock and then you get bored and then you don't make the other one but these ones I knocked out pretty quickly they have a knife partridge heel and they are just very quick to make and if you have a yarn that uh, is is really pretty and you know you want the yarn to be the start of the show then a simple sock pattern like this is the way to go and that is it two of these projects are from my make nine uh, although I had already done one so the York pinafore is part of my make nine and then the ginger jeans are part of my make nine so with those two and then the uh, the weekend sweater weekend weekender sweater from wear knitters that I posted a couple of videos ago that's three things off my make nine for 2019 so that's not too bad I am very happy with the way that March went and I should say that most of the of these sewing things I made within the span of one week because it was spring break and after I had a crazy two and a half months uh, with work just it was it was nutty I've been talking about this forever so I won't go into detail I decided that I actually needed to take a break so I did nothing during spring break except sew and it was great <laughs> I wish I could do that more often I highly recommend it just don't do anything for a whole week and just so good for me so thank you so much for watching goodness I hope that this video actually works out because I am not doing it again I will see you next time bye